Question. What do Bill Paxton, Lance Henriksen, and Jeanette Goldstein all have in common? We keep odd hours. Hey, I'm Dustin, this is Horroritis, and if you answered that question with, they were all in Aliens together, you would technically be correct. But if you also answered the question, they were all in Near Dark together, you would be even more correct, because this is the Near Dark video. So, let's get right to it. The movie opens with Caleb meeting some friends outside of a bar. He spots a girl down the way eating ice cream, so he decides he's going to go try to pick up on her. After some small talk, she asks him for a ride home, and he obliges. During the ride, he's trying to charm this girl, whose name we've learned is May, but she's pretty unresponsive. Into the drive, she tells him to stop the truck, so, thinking he's about to get lucky, he pulls over. But instead of hooking up in the cramped, dirty cab of a pickup truck, she gets out. So naturally, Caleb follows. She tells Caleb to listen to the night, but Caleb's still trying to hook up, so he's not really listening to anything. She goes into a speech about the stars in the sky and how the light from the stars will take a billion years to reach the Earth, which is actually not accurate at all because it would have to be like a billion light years away and you wouldn't even be able to see that with the naked eye, so that's not right. Anyway, she says that by the time that light gets to Earth in a billion years, she'll still be here. And that's the first glimpse we get that there may be something wrong with May. She's either an undying, unholy monster, or she's crazy, both of which are great reasons to run away. Caleb, however, is a trooper, and he is not giving up. He says he's got a surprise for her, and he takes her to his farm to see his horse. And the horse actually freaks out when she gets close, and that's where we learn that horses don't like May. She then asks about what time it is, and Caleb doesn't know he's still trying to hook up, and she starts freaking out and says she needs to be home right now, he needs to take her home. So, of course, he takes her home. During the ride to her place, as the sky is getting lighter, she's getting more agitated. And Caleb decides now's just as good a time as any. He shuts off the truck and tells her that if she wants a ride home, she's going to have to kiss him first. Come on, mate. Just a little touch. I ain't asking for much. So, she does. Then she bites him. Then she runs away. Hey. Caleb, who's left with a bleeding neck and a truck that won't start, begins to walk home himself. Now, as he's walking home, the sun's coming up, he's starting to feel worse and worse. He's falling down, he's stumbling all over the place, and he doesn't seem to notice that his body is emitting smoke. At the same time, Caleb's sister is helping their dad on the farm, and she looks off across the field and sees Caleb stumbling across the way. At the exact same time that an RV drives up, grabs him, pulls him in, and drives away. This brings us to where the story gets interesting, and you know what that means. It's a shame that we don't actually meet the really good characters until about 15 minutes into the movie. And there's only really three of them. Maybe you know them from somewhere. Maybe the reason these guys are the best characters is because they were literally picked from Aliens. Thanks to director Catherine Bigelow's soon-to-be husband and director of Aliens, James Cameron. She was practically handed gold with this cast. So, the moral of this story is, if you're going to make movies, you should probably have sex with James Cameron. The character that stands out the most, though, is probably Severin, played by Bill Paxton. He's loud, he's reckless, he's ready to crack a joke or wreak havoc. If somebody needs killing, he's the guy that'll volunteer first. He is, however, mindful of his place in the group, which is under the alpha male, Jesse, who is played by Lance Henriksen, because, let's face it, if Lance Henriksen is going to be in a group of vampires, he's going to lead it. And yes, I did say vampires. If you hadn't figured it out yet, that's what this movie is. And if you hadn't figured it out, don't feel bad, because on the surface, this movie's kind of hard to classify. The reason for that is that originally the director wanted to make a western. Then she realized people weren't really into westerns anymore. So, because horror was popular at the time, she decided to make a horror movie. It may not have been the best reason to do so, but luckily for her, it worked. 
Aside from that, the rules to being a vampire are fairly ambiguous in this movie. We have no idea if they're affected by garlic or religious symbols or if they cast a reflection in a mirror. All we really do know is that they're super strong. They're super old. How old are you? Let's put it this way, I fought for the South. They drink blood. And sunlight kills them. Oh, also there's a cure. That's right, after Caleb escapes and makes it back to his family, his father performs a blood transfusion and suddenly Caleb's all better. Later, after the big climax of the movie, May also undergoes a blood transfusion, and we assume that May and Caleb live happily ever after. How does that even work, though? I mean, are they just like laying in bed one night and Caleb's like, Oh, honey, do you remember when we were both vampires and you killed that trucker? Ah, <laughs> <sighs> good times. And the word vampire isn't even used in this movie. It's kind of like the reverse zombie rule, where in a zombie movie you're not allowed to say zombie, but in a vampire movie you have to say vampire. There's a law. I'm sure. The worst character in this movie, though, is Homer. Not because the kid that played him was a bad actor, but because the character is so damn annoying. I have any idea what it's like to be a big man on the inside and have a small body on the outside? Do you have any idea what it's like to hear about it every night? Homer suffers from Chihuahua Syndrome, which is where the littlest guy has to act the toughest or at least be the loudest. That's H-O-M-E-R. This pronounces it and I wouldn't want to be you. Now I understand. Homer's pissed because he's forever stuck in the body of a 12 year old, but he has immortality, he'll never have to go through that awkward puberty phase, and he will never pay full price for a movie. So what the hell? Seriously, every time I hear this kid talk, I want to tell him to shut up. You can't, May. I churned you. I taught you. Shut up, Homer. He ain't one of us. He don't belong. Besides. So damn ugly and makes my gums ache. Shut up, Homer. I turn May. She went off and turned you. Now I'm turning your little sister. Shut up, Homer. And he's kind of creepy. He falls in love with Caleb's sister, who's like 10, and even kills himself trying to steal her. <laughs> Sure, he's 12 on the outside, but how old is he really? I mean, Jesse, who is alluded to as being involved in the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. Hey, Jesse, remember that fire we started in Chicago? And the Civil War at one point calls this kid old man. Yeah, I lied. No, please, no. Pull yourself together, old man. Aside from Homer, everything else in this movie is pretty good. Even the ending, which could have been a little better, wasn't that bad. It was just a little tame. At the end, Jesse and Diamondback have pretty much lost everything, so they decide they're gonna run Caleb down in the road. But instead, they just kinda coast down the street until they catch on fire and explode in a ditch. was Catherine Bigelow's first time directing on her own, and for her first solo movie, it's pretty damn watchable. It takes vampires and puts them in a role that we're not used to seeing them in. I mean, seriously, when was the last time you saw vampires in a gunfight? So that's it for this video. If you haven't seen this movie, you need to watch it. And as always, if you have seen it, you should probably watch it again because it's worth it. And if you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button because I've got tons more coming. If you want to buy this movie because you don't own it, hit the link in the comments and go to my website where there's an Amazon link where you can buy it. If you want to get in touch with me personally, you can comment here or you can catch me on Twitter or Facebook, both at The Horroritis. So until next time, I'm Dustin, this was Horroritis, 
Thanks for watching.